This morning, I'm going to focus my remarks on children and youth with sexual behavior problems. And I'm going to talk about our work at OJJDP to help those young people and their child victims. A recent study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association specifically looked at whether childhood sexual abuse predicts subsequent sexual offending. The researchers found that children with histories of abuse and neglect were at increased risk for being arrested for sex crimes. However, they also found that individuals with a history of child sexual abuse were not at unique risk to be arrested for a sex crime compared with other physically abused or neglected individuals or matched control individuals. Put more simply, all children who are abused and neglected face increased risk of committing future crimes, including sex crimes, and all those children should receive appropriate intervention. I'm proud to say that our office promotes both programs and research to assist both overlooked, both of these overlooked and underserved populations. For instance, we are currently funding a program that includes support for project sites as well as training and technical assistance. The program features funding and uh, features includes one tribal site. And because of its dual focus on addressing and reducing victimization and problematic behavior, the program has enormous potential. At each of the sites, multidisciplinary teams, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, will develop community-based integrated services for youth with sexual behavior problems, their victims, and their families. Ultimately, the program aims to develop approaches that will help families and professionals recognize and respond to sexual behavior problems, rather than deny and minimize them. Early, effective, coordinated services will mean more and better treatment options. The program also includes an evaluation component so that OJJDP can measure the effectiveness of the project sites and determines if this approach should be replicated in other communities. It is vital that we use treatment approaches that are appropriate for youth, approaches which are very different from those used with adult sex offenders. First, any effort to treat youth with sexual behavior problems must be based on the well-documented fact that juvenile sex offenders have more in common with other youth in the juvenile justice system than they do with adult sex offenders. That is why treatment based on adult models have been largely unsuccessful. Any treatment used with youth must be developmentally appropriate and taken into consideration, and take into consideration the unique aspects of youthful offenders, including, and this is very important, potential previous victimization, inherent impulsivity, and their incredible capacity for rehabilitation. Teenagers are different from adults. I mean that literally. <laughs> Children and adolescents are biologically wired differently than adults. They have trouble regulating their feelings, have a heightened sensitivity to peer pressure, and don't fully understand the implications of their decisions or actions. Therefore, in the juvenile justice system and elsewhere, children and youth must be treated differently from adults. 